Hi everyone, we are going to carry on with grade 11 past papers. First of all, we are answering multiple choice questions with you. Question one, multiple choice questions all about mechanics from final exam from past paper questions. We are answering mechanics questions only. Question one from 1.1 to 1.5 all about mechanics. So let's try, let's answer these questions. Number one. Which one of the following forces cannot be equal to zero? This is our question one. Normal force, frictional force, gravitational force, and applied force. So which, which one cannot be zero, people? Our answer is gravitational force. Why gravitational force? Let's try to explain, people. Gravitational force depends on mass and gravity. Fg gravitational force equals mass times gravitational acceleration. If you have any object, so it has mass. It is maybe small 0, 0,0001, but still it has mass. And then times by 9.8, even mass of electron, all particles, all particles, they have mass. Because of that, it cannot be zero. And then gravitational force, gravitational acceleration, is constant for Earth, it is 9.8. Other planet, of course, different, but we have gravitational force number also. When you multiply them, you are getting gravitational force. It cannot be zero. So normal force, it can be zero if it's not touching the surface. You know, people, normal force depends on object that connects. If it is on the table, just we have a box on the table, for example, when just touching surface, you have normal force. If you have this system opposite to gravitational force. So for Newton's law, for mechanics people, showing force is very important. Please remember gravitational force coming from center. If they ask you draw force diagram, you must just show the center of object and then normal force from surface. Just it is start from surface, that's connection point and then normal force, it's here. So it can, it can be zero. Frictional force can be zero if coefficient number is zero. And then apply force, of course, can be zero, but gravitational force, never. That is our answer 1.1. Answer is C. Let's continue with next question. Let's see what we have. Question 1.2 now. You have a diagram, force diagram, or vector diagram, you can say, people, Q, R, S, T. Which one of the following vectors is the resultant of the other three vectors? Which one of the vectors? So for this kind of question, people, resulting vector from tail to head. So you can check which vector or which force from tail to head. So let's start with Q. Let's start with option A. As you see, from head of T to head of R. As you see, it is not our resulting, resulting force. When you come to, I'm not going to R because it's answer. So let's come to T. T is from head to tail. As you see people, it is opposite to resulting force. And then S, tail to tail. But when you come to R, as you see, tail of S, and then last one, head of Q. So this is your, just R is giving you people Q plus T plus S, giving you R. R is resulting, resultant of other vectors, people resulting vectors. Answer is B, R is, so I hope method is easy, right? I hope you are getting it. Just check from tail to head. Or you can use other options, but that option is nice, easy. All right, let's continue with next question. Question 1.3. Now, lift problem. A girl of weight 600 newtons, standing on a bathroom scale, yes, and then in a lift that is moving, and she noticed that scale reads 550, 560 newtons. Okay. So what's going on? They're asking you lift, just motion of lift. So for this kind of question, people, 
how they ask question. First of all, someone inside lift with scale on scale. So you just let's draw a girl, ugly girl, it's fine. Just let's draw, okay. A girl on the scale in lift on the scale, normal weights, normal weights, weight equals 600 newtons. And then now she reads, she's just reading FG or you can write or weight you can write. Now reading 560 newtons. As you see, reading less. So for lift problems, people, we have three options. First one, maybe all options here, let's see. Okay, first option, acceleration is zero and velocity is zero. It means your lift is not moving or acceleration is zero, V is constant, V is constant. Still same, this two, you are gonna read normal weight. Your FG, what you are reading on the scale is equal to normal weight, for example, for this question, 600. If it is like that, you are gonna read 600. I hope it is clear. If, it is, if lift is not accelerating, slowing down or getting faster. So if it is not accelerating, you have same weight, normal weight. But if accelerating up, just like option A, accelerating up on, and then accelerating up, slowing down or going fast, it's fine. But accelerating up, all right, accelerating up, positive or negative, it's fine. If it is accelerating up, formula is Fg equals m times g, as you know, m times g is normal weight, plus m times a. So you are gonna read more. Just you will read, for example, it is 600, you will get more than 600. So Fg is more than 600. But accelerating down, just like this one, Fg equals m times g minus m times a accelerating down. So now your FG less than 600. All right, you are gonna use this formula. Next time maybe they can give you mass and then acceleration and then they can ask you what, is, what you read on the scale. So you can calculate with this formula people. Maybe you can write a, for normal formula, normal weight formula, M times G, FG equals. If your acceleration is zero, V is zero or constant object at rest, or moving with constant speed, you are calculating with m times g. If accelerating up, you are using this formula, mg plus ma. And then if accelerating down, fg equals mg minus m times a. I hope you are getting it, people. So now, as you see, you are getting less than normal weight. If you are reading less than normal weight, let's see our options. Option A. Accelerating up, this one is not correct. Why is it correct? Accelerating up, it is not correct. Why? Because if accelerating up, you are gonna read more than FG. More than that because 600 plus something, right? And then, okay. And scale reads is not on. Okay, let's see question on the weight 600 or on a bathroom scale in a lift is moving. She noticed that she scale. Okay, so now you have less, yeah, we are right. All right, so next one, accelerating downward, mg minus ma, yes. Now, less than that, less than normal weight. This is our answer. Let's see, moving upwards at constant velocity, if you move, if you use this motion, it's supposed to be 600 people. All right, just like normal weights. Weight is 600, so you are gonna read 600. And then moving downward at constant velocity, this one, same thing people, both of them acceleration zero, you are gonna read 600, 600. Accelerating downward, less than that, so 560, it is fine. But this one is supposed to be more than 600, maybe 700, maybe 800, depends on acceleration. So now answer is B, 
question 1.3 answer is b we can carry on let's continue with next question let's see what we have okay passengers is moving a moving car or advice they will wear safety belt this will reduce their chance of getting in your, okay next this and so let's see what physics law now please check and try let's see which one is or well, which physics law newton's first law second law third law or or newton's law of universal gravitation for this one moving in a car so answer is newton's first law so what was the newton's first law people if acceleration is zero force is zero f equals f net equals zero if acceleration is zero newton's second law what was it f net equals m times a now you have acceleration newton's third law as you know people action and reaction force newton's law of universal gravitation newton's law of universal gravitation f equals g times m1 times m2 over r square so if you have two objects m1 and m2 and then distance between these two objects people is r m1 and m2 and then you are calculating force by using this formula answer is newton's first law all right let's continue we don't need more details for this question let's continue with next one so now asking you people graph between force and one over r square so for newton's law of universal gravitation what was the formula let's write our formula f equals g it is constant number times m1 times m2 over r square people so if you remove all just to see the f1 just let's say all of them just constant number just like x or k anyway k over r square i'm writing for g times m1 times m2 r square as you see you can write f equals k times one over r square people as you see just like k times x in maths you know so directly proportional to each other so answer is c so let's continue with next question because directly proportional and then we have done for today Thank you very much. See you next lesson.